So, we're out here to talk some football, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, yeah. Steph still wants to give us some news. And guess what? We're going to run with those news. As you, as you can see, we switch roles. Your host down in the play, make silence. Just a good boy. Kind of. Yeah, I'm doing better than I did last week. I, 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 I'm doing a little bit better than last week. Dallas Glenn, Pensacola, Florida. How are you feeling this week? I'm trying to dodge all the BS and all the sickness. I'm trying to stay my ass home as everybody should. Stay home. So, uh... Last time, last time we talked, we, we talked about a lot of different things that happened last week. More importantly, the Jaguars signing Tyler Eifert. Rashard Brillen going to the Jets, you know, David Funches going to the Packers. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was last week. But what's happened since then? Uh, let's see. The Chiefs? Not much, to be honest. Man, yeah, not much. Um, Anthony Sherman, fullback. Chiefs. So the Chiefs are keeping I, their fullback. Always got to get a little. The Chiefs have a hundred and seventy-seven dollars in cap space. Mike Pinnell. Where did Mike Pinnell play? Is returning to Mike Pinnell's coming back. So they trying. They trying to keep their Super Bowl squad together. I mean, why not? See, the problem that Super Bowl teams usually have is that they usually win a Super Bowl at the end of everybody's contract. Like, the Super Bowl is usually a culmination of the team being together for a certain number of years and then replacing weak points with the draft. The Chiefs got lucky. Their quarterback doesn't need to be paid for another two years. Um, they had just signed Matthew and Clark. He does get paid. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, he, he's going to reset everybody's market. Um, Tyreek Hill, I think he still has a year before he gets paid. But his signing bonus is ridiculous. Um, so, I mean, the big pieces are there. Then when you think about it, you don't win a Super Bowl with the major names. You win a Super Bowl with the mid-carters. So all those mid-carters, they're still in place. So why not run it back? Um, you see the, the 49ers who lost in the Super Bowl, they flipped the Forrest Buckner, who was due for a 13th overall pick. So they're probably going to replace the Forrest Buckner with a decent lineman with that pick. But, I mean, they kind of held tight, too. They might get somebody to go opposite Debo Samuel, but they're fine. And that's kind of sort of what you want to do. You want to keep those championship defenses or championship offenses together as much as possible. Legion of Boom, the early 2000s Patriots, um, the 2010s Patriots, Steelers in the 70s, Steelers in the 2000s. I mean – Good franchises usually keep it together. Uh, Marcus Mariota came out and said he's Derek Carr's backup. That's very – I find that laugh. Why do you find it laugh? Because it's going to be a quarterback competition whenever everything blows over. I don't think – I don't think Marcus Mariota is a better quarterback than Derek Carr. I don't think people give Derek Carr enough credit. He might not be. But Derek Carr ain't showing it. And how is he not showing it? Dude, they were in playoff contention last year. It's the second year with a new head coach that tore up the team the first year. We'll see. If, if, no, dude, if Derek Carr was Andrew Luck, we would have seen it by now. He's not Andrew Luck. That's fine. He needs a team. That's fine. A lot of Super Bowl winning quarterbacks need a team. But good God, John Gruden, when he came in the door, he was thinking 10 years. I mean, he's ahead of schedule. And if he didn't have Derek Carr, he'd probably be behind. Uh, Jadavion Conley still hasn't been signed by signed by nobody yet. So, and what's taking the Seattle Seahawks so long? Y'all really want to resign this man? Where, 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 where is the hold up? In? I keep telling you, it's the money. Jadavion Clowney and Yannick Ngakwe don't care about each other, but they're playing chicken with each other. Because when Jadavion Clowney gets signed, a team is not going to have to give up any picks to sign him. The team that trades for Yannick not only has to give up day one and day two picks and maybe a player, but they're also going to have to sign a number close to or right at what Clowney signed for. 
So, like, teams know, like, it's tricky out there because Yannick is better than God. I mean, like, Yannick is better than Clowney right now. But Clowney is a former number one overall pick. You're hoping that a former number one overall pick who didn't bust out with his team, but his coach just didn't want to pay him, can finally be that number one. He's good. He's real good. But the other guy in Jacksonville has been putting up the same numbers as him, and he's a former third or fourth round pick. That's what's taking so long. Well, Ty J. Sharp is with the Vikings. They're no longer with the Titans. You can't replace the fun digs, but I mean, you can at least fill the hole. That's what that is. Going into a wide receiver heavy draft, no first round pick. Or third or third. Uh, no, wait, they have two first round picks. My bad. I'm thinking of the Bills. Um, yeah, so, you know, get Tajay, draft another receiver because you got, you, you, you extended your quarterback. Um, maybe they know, try to fix. Yeah, but you know, see, Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr. Um, I think I would, oof. From scratch, I'd pick Derek Carr. But they're the same type of quarterback in that, you know, Kirk Cousins is an Andrew Luck, and that's okay. But you just traded away one of the best young deep threat receivers in the league. You're going to need to replenish that in the draft with one of those first-round picks. You extended your quarterback, put some weapons around him. Dalvin Cook, he had a real good season, but he's had injury history. Now, after carrying that load, you might want to get some insurance because Kirk Cousins works very well off of play action. So that's that move. Nikhil Wobi Coleman is with the Eagles, no longer around. One of many moves they need to make. Eagles fans just need to be patient, bro. They made the playoffs last year literally because of Carson Wentz. Everybody got hurt, and then Carson got hurt in the playoff game. But they made the playoffs because of Carson. They won the division head-to-head against that, the second-to-last game of the season, because of Carson. They need to be patient. They have a quarterback who might be able to have the Andrew Luck factor to where he doesn't need a great team. He doesn't need his protection. So, you know, they just need to be patient because why would you want your GM to waste all the money on defense when Carson's just out there throwing to an old duct taped um, Zach Ertz, Lane Johnson getting hurt, Kelsey. How much longer Kelsey going to be? How long has he been playing center at a high level? He's about to retire soon. I mean, dude. By the way, sticking with the Eagles, Jason Kidd is still a free agent. Not surprising, because you got to think. I don't think with Peters, it's the money. Because if a team really wanted a left tackle that bad, Jason Peters has played a lot of games. It's the injury history. So you got to think the injuries, how long would you have him? You also got to think, like, bro, do you really want Jason Peters as a backup? Because is Jason Peters really better than your left tackle right now? I know for certain in Jacksonville, Jason Peters is better than Ken Robinson. I think right now, if politics isn't involved, Jason Peters might be able to beat out Jawan Taylor for right tackle. But again, do you want to put a guy who played every snap his rookie season in an open competition? Do you want to give up on a guy you spent the second round pick on for a guy who's probably out the league next year? That's just one team's example. It's probably the other way, too, for a lot of teams. And going back to my Rams, Michael Brockers, welcome home, sir, after your how many days with the Ravens. There is something in this CBA that the players tried to tell us, but it's not getting out. I know Eric Reed has a lawsuit. I think he's I think he's suing the NFL PA. I don't think he's suing the NFL with this one. I think he's suing the NFL PA. But um there's something, there's something going on here because yeah, the new stuff is making it hard for physicals and everything, but dude, like uh, may- maybe it happens. M- maybe it happens more often, but uh, it's been really funky. A lot more physical talk. A lot more couldn't agree to terms talk. A lot more can't report unless it's officially done because of competitive. And then, and then this whole, you know, because I think uh, Dequez Denard is the only one who didn't. But you know, there's a lot of um, I couldn't sign with this team, so I'm gonna just go back home. That's interesting. At that point, were you really an unrestricted free agent? Like, inter- very interesting times. Very interesting. Oh, speaking of people who are still in the market, Jamison Cam, a passing I champion. Was, in the I, I, I was, was, was kind of saving that 
for like his own what segment. Well, yeah, it does deserve its own segment. It does deserve its own segment. Corey Latimer leaving the Broncos for the Redskins. Well, which yeah, position is uh, wide receiver? Oh, okay. what else do you got going on here? So uh, the Colts, they got their quarterback. The problem is the only wide receivers they got is T.Y. Hilton, Paris Campbell, and Zach Pascal. That's it. Uh, as, a Jag- the as a Jaguars fan, I am very happy that they are doing this weird strategy with their quarterback room because they st- they have forty million dollars dedicated to the quarterback room. Jacoby Brissett, as of right now, is the backup. Now, if he beats Philip Rivers, that's that's one thing. But then again, this new CBA, we got to figure out what's in that contract because you're paying old fella twenty five million dollars over one year. I mean, Philip Rivers' agent would have to be somebody from the Westboro Baptist Church to get that money some type of wrong because that's that starter money. That isn't Jacoby Brissett might beat out a guy who's in the Hall of Fame on his third ballot maybe earlier. Uh, that's not how that works. The thing is, though, Philip Rivers is going to win at least six games, at least. And if Philip Rivers ain't winning six games, Jacoby's going to be back in. Either way, their quarterback room is built to where if the season's going that bad, they're just going to go to the other guy. Well, like, it's they're going to win too. many. It's a move you probably right. don't like when the coach did. They wanted mm-hmm. Xavier Rose three stakes. Oh, I love that move. I love DJ Shark against Xavier Rose right now twice a year. Hopefully, a receiver drafted in the first round can go against him too because he should not be CB1 on the Colts. He should be a nickelback right now, going off their depth chart. I remember my head off rip, but you know, they might have my CB too. But I, man, the Texas fans would love that move too, but they didn't trade away their guy. And speaking of and speaking of things not happening, the Quez Denard and the Jaguars haven't got haven't gotten it together. I mentioned that earlier, but yeah, like he wanted to, he wanted to compete to play outside. He's a nickelback. So they didn't want to – and on top of that, one of the picks the Jaguars are probably going to use in the – their first three picks are two in the first round, one in the second as of now. So either that second-round pick or that second first-round pick is probably going to be spent on a corner. So, like, nah, don't don't pay for a guy who's a nickelback, but he wants to go outside, and, that, and that's probably why it works. Uh, speaking of the Super Bowl champs trying to keep their team together, Reggie Ragland is leaving the Chiefs for the Lions. Yeah, that's okay. Because they got to figure out how to play Chris Jones. And, and a, lot, a, lot, a lot more pieces are going to have to I don't know why they haven't made the Sammy Watkins. I think Sammy Watkins is like a $21 million cap or something. I don't know why they haven't made the Sammy Watkins. Again, wide receiver, deep draft. You may get lucky and find somebody in the third. Talk about it, like a cheap contract. Like, is Sammy Watkins, even though he still has some deep threat in him, is he really giving you what basically what's worth more than Tyreek Hill? Because I think he makes more than Tyreek Hill right now, or at the same level. And Sammy Watkins is not Tyreek Hill right now. Ain't Tyreek Hill still on his rookie contract? Nah, because he's getting like a double digit signing. I think he, I think he got his new contract over the offseason. Because I was one of, um, I mean, yeah, Sammy Watkins ain't. He had fifty two, six seventy three, and three touchdowns last year. That ain't bad. But I mean, God, for the cap hit they're taking? No, that contract's ridiculous for what? Yeah, he signed a three-year, $54 million extension. $5.9 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, Tyree Hill has a new contract. He has two years on And I'm going to end this segment on a sad note for me. Now, Terry Poe leads the Carolina Panthers to go to the Cowboys. But more importantly, Greg Zerline is a damn cowboy. Actually, you shouldn't really be that sad because in that case, he's probably going to go wide left in a game that y'all need to win to stay in the playoff hunt. So, at least there's that. Ever since they cut Dan Bailey, man. Ever since they cut Dan Bailey. Greg Zerline has been one of the top five kickers close for how many years? You should really be more concerned about your front office thinking that cutting a good kicker helps their cap situation. More so than just letting Brockers hit the street. 
like a front office that thinks cutting their kicker helps in the long run. That's kind of iffy. Now, Steven Gaskowski in New England, that's a bit different because he's getting kind of old. He's getting kind of injured. And it's Bill Belichick. He's probably going to find somebody on draft the three. He's probably not going to waste a pick on the next guy. But, yeah, the issues that the Rams have are different than issues that the Patriots have. And getting rid of Greg Zerline for what? You know you're about to be kicking a lot of field goals. Brandon Cook's on the trade block again. Like, there's a lot of cap to unload. We're, we're, we're going to take a break on that. And I'm regaining myself together, okay? All right. Um, all right. Now we're back. We got – what else we got going on here? Uh, Shelby Harris is back with the Broncos. The Marcus Robinson is back with the Chiefs. Speaking of the Broncos, there, Wolf is going to the Baltimore Ravens. Tell you, geez, this damn D-line of Ravens. <sighs> they you are know, trying to finish the deal. You know, the Ravens, when they really start building one of their lines, whether it's the defensive line or the offensive line, that's really when you got to start getting scared. Because the Ravens are like the only team in the NFL who are truly able to sustain 90s, like 70s foot. They're the only people to really sustain line of scrimmage football and actually make it work. And with the way that Lamar Jackson got down last year, you know the offensive line is fine. Now they're building up the defensive line. They have a big loss with Marshall Yonda, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's the Ravens, let's be honest. What are the Ravens going to spend the first-round pick on? Are they going to spend it on a guard to replace Marshall Yonda, or are they going to spend it on a wide receiver? Or are they going to spend it on a corner? Or are they going to make that mistake again and spend it on a tight end? Gary Tyler, be North, scary be afraid. Tyler. Be very afraid. Scary times in the North. Uh, Aaron Rodgers lost a weapon. Well, I ain't gonna say a weapon. Like he, he he lost somebody he can toast to every now and then. Geronimo Allison leaves. In my opinion, very successful at the same time. He leaves the Packers and goes to the Lions. Geronimo is on a league minimum veteran benefit deal. So I mean, yeah, he he lost somebody to throw to every three downs. So that's cool. And then Randall Darby leaves the Eagles and goes to the Redskins. So, uh, that, yep, that, yep, that brings us everything up to date as of right now, which means for the rest of the remainder of this segment, Dallas Glenn wants to talk Cam and Jameis because mm, Cam was let go by the Carolina Panthers. A little bit surprising. Not really. James Winston. I say a little. I say a little. Ain't even a little bit surprising. James Winston was then brought back to Tampa Bay for obvious reasons. Man, that's not surprising at all. That's not debatable. And they both still on the market right now. So that is clean. Take it away. It's kind of difficult when you consider Cam still being on the market because. I I don't see Cam Newton turning down a one year, twelve thirteen million dollar deal. I might see him turning down a one year incentive heavy deal where he's only really making you know seven or eight at the base. Because I mean Cam Newton, if he ends up starting and he's fully healthy, can help a team make a run. I don't see Cam Newton not being able to make a Nick Foles esque run and at least get a team to the divisional round after coming in a relief. So, like, but still, a one-year deal, how much are you really going to make on a one-year deal coming off of two or three straight seasons where it got ended prematurely because of injury? So, like, I, I, don't, I don't know why his situation is weird because even if you're drafting a quarterback in this draft, are you going to throw him out there day one? Ends have Haskins. And I can't remember who their backup is. They did sign a backup. Oh, yeah, Kyle Allen. They have Kyle Allen. People are talking about the That's Dolphins. Kyle Allen back there. Uh, people talking about the Dolphins might be making a move, big move, but they'd be making that big move to get Burrow. 
So you gotta think if they make a big move to get Burrow, Fitzpatrick's the backup, and Josh Rose is hitting the damn road, which is gonna make it even harder for Cam Newton to get a job. Because for whatever reason, Josh Rosen, former top ten pick, supposedly the best pure pocket pass of his draft, Cam Newton, injury prone, older running quarterback. I'll leave it there because hopefully that's the reason why Josh Rosen gets signed for him. But yeah, the Cam Newton thing is really difficult because you at least bring him into a training camp. And just the way that the quarterback market is set up, Cam's not going to make any less than $9 million if he makes a team. I just don't understand why Cam Newton is at least on a roster for when training camp starts. That's what's blowing my mind. Because after Jordan Love and Jacob Eason took a big drop down to Jake Fromm, and then it's really everybody else. Talk about Khalil Tate. Paul McDonald's not going to go before the third day. Uh, there's a guy from uh, Colorado that's coming out. He ain't do too hot in his college career. So, and then Colorado's going to balk with your offenses. So, still, after the teams get the quarterback they need, which will be either the Chargers, the Dolphins, the, um, the Bengals, maybe the Jaguars, if they're stupid and lucky at the same time. And then a couple other teams across the first round. So the, the top four quarterbacks are going to be gone before the middle of the second round. If you're one of those teams that don't get those top five quarterbacks, you're literally just bringing in guys for camp in the practice squad anyway. Camp can't go on the practice squad at this point, but him not being in camp, that's odd. Now, James. If James Mr. Didn't, Offense Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year. If James Winston didn't think that his positive numbers outweighed his negative numbers to the point where he still can achieve top market value, I think he'd be on the team. Jameis Winston wants a team to pay him upwards of around $26 million. And I'm ballparking this because Phillip Rivers got 25 and he's easily penciled in as the starter right now this year in front of Jacoby Brissett unless something happens in camp. I mean, what what else is the reason? Jameis Winston still wants more than $26 million, and that's why nobody's touching him. Because nobody is giving him a contract that makes them have to start him. If he wins in camp, if he's the best quarterback, fine. But you're not just going to get penciled. We're not going to be stuck with you at quarterback this year. We'll hope to have you. We hope that you can take those numbers down to the teens. Hell, the low 20s. But Nah, nah, nah. We're not about to pay twenty-six plus million dollars for thirty picks in a season that's over in week eight because we know this man's gonna throw a pick six when we need him not to the most. Like it's Bruce Arians has said it. Everybody else has said it. Hell Jameis has even said it. He said it in his last presser before uh, the league year ended. Like, bro, them picks gotta go down. But Jameis isn't gonna be able to prove that the picks are going down until he gets on the team. I saw the video that he sent out where he was dropping buckets, like deep bomb buckets, throwing long balls through the hoop, straight net. Nobody said you weren't accurate. You throw it to the you throw it in the chest of the other team. Nobody said you weren't accurate. And you can't have 5,100 yards unless you're able to place the deep ball downfield. Bro, it's the money. And I ain't never going to be in a man's pocket and say, hey, man, you shouldn't get money. I'm just saying, with Clowney, Jan, and Jameis, and maybe even Cam, bro, it's the market. It's the money. It is what it is. I'll never use the term home of yourself because a football career only lasts so long. And when you're proven and when you're a veteran, you should have to humble yourself for a dang thing. Because there's a lot of guys out here that they're reaching for in the first round. And there's a lot of guys out here getting second, third, and fourth chances I should be getting these second, third, and fourth chances when you got a passing champion, a guy who's been to the Super Bowl, mind you, in a year where he had a very good defense. A pass rush as a former number one overall pick. It isn't necessarily a bust yet. And a guy who, bro, you, you want young premium talent, you're going to have to give up young premium talent assets. The Jaguars have offloaded Calais Campbell, got something back when it was going to be a cap casualty. Offloaded A.J. Boye, 
was going to get rid of his contract, cap casualty, got something back. Nick Foles, disaster, complete disaster. Miraculously, they got something back and only had to give up the player. The front office isn't bad. The front office isn't dumb as far as trading players that they need to get rid of for cap purposes go. But at the same time, it's money at the end of the day because you got to give up picks and sign on it. So when you look at two defensive ends that y'all are about to get twenty million, y'all need a new coach. Or that's what y'all need. Darnell, let's play nice because I only talked about the kicker. I didn't talk about all the other issues. But when you look at defensive ends, I'm just saying. Uh, I'm just saying, Tom Coughlin built a culture that's not that was not suited for the players. That's all I'm saying, bro. All I'm saying is you guys are offloading kickers and re-signing guys that you probably should have still let walk at positions that cost money because your cap is hell. Hell, we got hell. We got a new logo, and it's the dumbest logo in the damn league right now. I'm just saying. It's just all I know is two defensive ends are about to get twenty million dollars. Cam's not getting twenty million. Jameis was twenty six plus. I, you know it's bad when Eric Dickerson comes out and makes his own logos for the team. Mind you, because he because the new logo. Mind you, Eric Dickerson is actually employed by the team. <laughs> he he is saying this ish while still getting a check signed by Crawford. Like it's amazing. Like it's, oh, you know it's bad. Like, it's rough, but I mean that's that's the Jameis Winston. Sure, man, I'm, that's why I'm surprised you ain't come at me last week. Because there's no reason to kick a man while he's down. I have dignity. I'm a gentleman. A gentle man. But, dude, like, that's 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 the weird thing with Cam. It's, it's money, and there's a draft coming up. But all the quarterbacks in this draft have a name to them, if you've been paying attention. Colorado's been on the rise the past couple of years. Their quarterback is coming out. That's been leading those teams. Hawaii had a ridiculous season last year. Very close to winning the Playmakers Ball and National Championship. Cole McDonald was the quarterback of that team for most of the game. Uh, Khalil, at one point, he was a Heisman candidate. He's a practice squad guy. But how high do you pick him? There's, there's, there's quarterbacks who have names and who had notable years and stuff, but in this draft coming out, that makes you think, okay, I'm going to spend a seventh on this project quarterback instead of getting camped. I'm going to give a roster spot to this project right. quarterback instead of signing him. And there's no quarterback in this draft. In this All, right. All right, to close it out, I'm going to throw a team out there. You can say Jameis, Cam, or neither. Uh-huh. Yo, yo, Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Cam. Okay. All right, let's go to the Los Angeles Chargers. Jameis. New England Patriots. Cam. Is there any other team want to throw out there? Uh, nah. I don't think so. Dude, that's let's, it? Nope. Let's throw Denver. Let's do, let's do Denver out there. Let's throw the different Broncos out there because John Larry still haven't found a quarterback yet. Mm, with the, what, uh, the style of football Denver's trying to play, Cam. People, that's, that, people have to remember Cam Newton was the quarterback that got Steve Smith out of wide receiver hell and helped Christian McCaffrey lead his team in receiving. Cam does not mind having a good running game. He does not mind having a good defense. And he does not mind checking it down to the running back. Vic Fangio is not trying to play light him up football. The only team that really fits for Jameis right now, ironically, is Jameis. Even though Tyrod's working out with Cam, Jameis is the best fit. Because the, the Chargers are still throwing it deep. The Chargers are throwing it deep, and they got 2,000-yard receivers coming back. And, 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 and a receiving back in Austin Eckler that almost had 1,000 yards. That's an offense that wants to pass the ball. Jameis Winston is able to handle that kind of offense. Cam Newton's arm can't handle that kind of offense anymore. His shoulder ain't got it. He needs an offense like what they're trying to do in Denver. And um, what they're trying to do in Jacks with the West Coast, run Leonard Fournette, or whoever else is in the backfield on the ground offense. That's why Jameis only really has one real pick for me, which, again, is why he needs to break the money down because his market ain't that big. Cam, no, his market should be way more expensive. Because a lot of, a lot of the experts, they, they want to see Cam with the Chargers. I don't know why, because 
they like throwing it deep. They like throwing it a lot. His shoulder can't handle that. I, I think that Cam Newton can maybe only handle between 356 and 420-something passes a season. He can't be in a pass-heavy offense anymore. You're going to have to keep his clip down to 430 or less. And in San, in the Los Angeles, I, bro, Austin Eckler had like 92 catches for 900 yards. That's just the running back. That's that's a, that's a fourth of Cam's clip right there. Yeah, there you have it. There go your Cam and Jameis talk. So we're going to take this second break of our show, and then when we come back, we're going to finish it off. All right, we are in the, the final segment of the show, and per usual. As you are accustomed to know, this is where we talk about our teams. And since we kind of already talked about my team, might as well go ahead and add on to it. So, uh, yes, we got Broncos today. Yes, we lost Gray's Airlines. We talked about it in the first segment. And the second segment, we talked about how stupid the logo we got now and stuff like that. Uh, interesting fact, Dallas, is uh, they are still building the stadium right now. True. Act just the same for Las Vegas, too, actually. So they trying to help and get that stadium built for before a concert. I think it's supposed to be in June. The report curve. We'll see how that works out. Uh, other than that, there has been no news from my Los Angeles Rams. Everybody jumped on Brandon Cooks because he wanted to say he wanted to get out of here, and then Cooper Cup. Thank you for Cooper Cup who came in and straightened all that out, saying he was like my quarantine because. Yeah, Los Angeles is one of those hot spots with this COVID nineteen. Yeah, I knew people were gonna jump on that tweet, but then when I scrolled down, I saw a lot of Bible verses too. So I was like, "Yeah, he's not talking about that." But they're gonna jump on. No, they jumped all over me. What you gonna? So yes, a a lot of negative stuff is happening in LA right now. There's no positive that's going on in LA right now. I was just we were I was just in the Super Bowl in 2018. I'm. And then 2020, he said, this is where I'm at. Again, go back to the, I think it was the first segment. Like, bro, Super Bowl teams, this is usually the problem that they have. The Super Bowl losers is even worse because those contracts are still due. It's hard to get back. Like, repeating is unheard of. That's why, you know, the Patriots, you give it a couple years. Give it a couple years and people are going to understand, like, oh, God, that was 20 years. That's never going to happen again. That was an extra decade of what the Bulls did. Right? But, I mean, it it's hard being the Super Bowl loser because you, you do the one-year contracts that year. You do the hot trades that year. You, you try to sustain the roster and sustain the momentum and success as much as possible. Because every Super Bowl team usually has that key injury. Every Super Bowl team usually has that rut where the defense or the offense just can't work and it's just trash for like a month. Like it's it's the shortest season in pro sports, but it is the longest season in pro sports. Because you're 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 going through like 50, 60 car crashes a game for 22 games. And I think that's if you're lucky, because I think it's 23, now will be 24, you're a wild card team. So, when when did we draft, when did Jared Goff and Carson Wentz come out? Uh, 2016. 2016. Yeah. We are going to the 2020 draft. No first round pick this year. No first round pick next year. Ooh. Ooh. That's that general round pick. Ooh. I got at least rate to twenty twenty two for a first round pick if 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 we get that far. So so are you saying that the Jared Goff contract might be a bad buy? I said I said it when it happened. Remember? <laughs> Hell, that's the reason why Dad Prescott still don't got a contract right now with the Cowboys. It's the best thing and the worst thing that could happen because see Carson Wentz. After this season, he proved that he had the Andrew Luck effect. You, Andrew Luck effect. 
He was the MVP candidate before he got hurt, but the work he did set the foundation for Nick Foles helping him get a Super Bowl. That doesn't count for Carson, but he set a hell of a foundation for Nick Foles. This past season, everybody got hurt, and God dang it, Carson Wentz went down with the ship too. I can't remember which guy leading the bottom with the player, but dude, like, you you don't want your quarterback to get hurt, but you want him to go down swinging in the playoffs that he carried him to. That might be the only time you want to see your quarterback go out swing. So, but if see if, if if Jerry didn't get paid, that would be okay. Because now you're comparing both contracts. You're comparing the contracts of a guy who did enough for his team to win a Super Bowl with a backup and a guy who carried his team to the playoffs in the division title and a guy who the Patriots figured out like the first quarter. And that's rough because, like, Dak hasn't done anything in the playoffs. And, you know, if he, if he, if Dak was Patrick Mahomes and won a Super Bowl in his rookie contract, I don't think this would be a discussion. Because if he won a Super Bowl that young, just like Russell Wilson, you'll at least get back. Shoot, uh, Mahomes was in the AFC Championship game season before last. Since we're in a new league leaders last. The season before last. So, they kind of sort of know in Kansas City, like, yeah, we're going to break him off because every season he's been a starter, we've been in the conference championship game. Better. Um, yeah, that's 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 tough because that contract is going to hurt because usually the way those contracts are set up, don't they get harder to cut him in the back end? <clears throat> or is it harder to cut him now? I'll get back to that. I have that. I have that information by, by preseason if there's a preseason. Okay. Um. So yeah. But let's get to the Jaguars. Some interest. Like this, this, this back and forth with your DN and organization. This won't stop. Yeah, but that's because you know. Hey, I mean. It's weird because Yannick Ngakwe is doing a lot of information control and perception control, but it's it's after free agency and it's before the draft. And Yannick doesn't have a history of severe out. He has like a hamstring history. He has like an ankle. Just, you know, a little nicks and bruises. But, I mean, dude, it's – the deal that the Jaguars want done has to be com- it has to be somewhere between the Nick Foles deal and the Jalen Ramsey deal. Now you may be thinking to yourself, Dallas, that's actually a pretty big gap. It's really not. Because the Jaguars being able to offload Nick Foles and get a pick back without having to give up anything but Nick Foles is actually a really, really good deal. If you do your research and look into that contract, they were due to pay him like $22 million. They still have a dead cap hit, but you don't pay for $22 million back. Again, which is why James is signed. So, and with the Jalen Ramsey deal, Jalen did a lot. Yannick is doing right now. So Yannick's just on Twitter. Dude, Jalen was on the sideline, not playing, saying his back hurt, having conversations with the owner, saying he would play. They're reneging like an hour before the game. Like, dude, Jalen Ramsey was doing some shit, bro. So, Jalen getting dealt for two firsts and a fourth to a large market team, mind you. Like that, that's also significant. But it also shows that, like, dude, this past offseason, there hasn't been a situation that's been too bad for the front office to trade out of. Now, look, on field is a completely different story. On the coaching box is a completely different story. But when it comes to trading and getting something for absolutely nothing, since the player refuses to re-sign, restructure, or play for said team, they've been doing okay this this offseason. I think they're going to F up the draft, but they've been doing okay with the trading part. That's why I just do sit tight. You can you can do all the tweets and stuff you want, but at the end of the day, if your agent is really that good, if your agent is really that guy and has experience with other clients, then he needs to tell you, and you should know, you're in that tricky part of the calendar. You're playing chicken with Jadavian Clowney. 
whatever Jadavian Clowney gets, that's without having to give up anything. They're going to have to give up at least four assets for you. And pay you. So it's, it's not even really a back and forth. It's just Yanni, he's doing what he can to get traded as soon as possible. That's fine. But, bro, you literally can't even go see the team. You can't do the press conference or anything. Still got to stay ass at home. I don't know if he's back home in Maryland. I don't know if he is in Florida. I don't know where. I don't know where the hell y'all at. All I know is he gets traded, and he's officially not a Jaguar anymore. He ain't gonna get the big ass press conference. It's gonna be a Zoom. Did you just say it's gonna be on Zoom? It's gonna be on Zoom or Skype or some shit. Wow. It is, it is big interesting. And that and that's Man, that's like I OTAs probably aren't even going to be a thing this off season because you got to think rookie OTAs happen not too long after the draft. I think rookie OTAs happen in like May, May if you if you pay attention to to the Florida Department of Education, May is not a thing right now. <laughs> they're look they're hopefully hoping. To have schools open back up May 3rd, which means that all the spring sports are basically open. I think May 3rd is the weekend they're supposed to have the track state championship. So, dude, like, dude, there's no way that the league here just up and runs. Okay, you have good, you guys, we, and I know you're pro athletes and whatever, and I know that they tweet you that you should be working out instead of playing video games, but no, we know good and dang well you've been playing video games. We know good and dang well you've been bored and watching Tire King. We know, we know you are not ready to come in here and enter a full-blown NFL training program. <laughs> We're going to ease you in, but in no way are we getting ready for the NFL preseason and the official NFL training camp in less than 30 days. And that's if, Darnell, that's if things go extremely well. So May is probably not even going to be a thing. You're talking about June. June with 120 guys and guys you just gave up assets and um, big money contracts for. It's tough. Well, there you go. So, dude, we got some NFL news and updates. Uh, Chris Godwin is giving up the number 12 and giving it to you-know-who. Is that really a surprise? No, it's not. So, um, he offered it up to Tom Brady. Tom Brady accepted and Chris Godwin's new number will be 14. So I wonder how many times they're gonna hear twelve to fourteen. Better be a lot, man. He made some money in that number. He he made a Pro Bowl in that number. He better be a lot. Throw to the brother. I don't know if Tom broke him off like they did back in the day, but um, if you didn't get broke off, you at least got a barter some targets. So, so you got a twelve at quarterback. You got a thirteen at receiver, and you got a fourteen at other receiver. It's about to go down. Consistently in heavy. So not only Tampa Bay is making moves, they making numbers too. Oh God! Other news: uh, apparently the draft is still on for April twenty. When is the draft? Oh, April twenty sixth, something like that. I think it's the twenty third. Apparently, to... apparently, uh, since they can't do the green room per se, fifty of the prospects will be on. Video during the draft. Nah, I mean, I on a good note, all 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 the proceeds on funny NFL draft would go to relief efforts for COVID nineteen. So. I really wouldn't push to do all the bells and whistles. I think that the NFL itself would get like a lot. I think they'd be just fine doing the draft and having Fox and, you know, ESPN and NBC and whoever else is a sport and what they usually do. It's because eh, ESPN usually broadcasts the NFL. ESPN is going to have live coverage of drafts and then selections. Anyway, that just seems like, bro, a lot can happen. A lot can happen, and you're talking about live TV and a live event. And then on top of that, shoot, 
man, by the time we get there, is ESPN even going to have anybody in that doggone studio? I think they're doing get up from home. I think they're doing first take from home. I know Will Kane show, he is doing stuff from home. Like, I, I think all the radio is doing stuff from home. Like, bruh, is anybody, who, who's going to coordinate this? God bless that producer. Yeah, so that's that's what's going down. Uh, they also said news came out that they would have the NFL schedule released by no later than May night. Nice. Question is, what date is the first game going to be on? That is a very. I think that you know, I don't, I don't that like the conspiracy very... theories, but I do. Just looking at other countries and everything, and looking at like how long their worst periods were. September seems reasonable, but again, people are dumb. People aren't staying at home, so you would think, though. I mean, dog, it's only it's 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 just now April at the time of this release. We're recording this the thirty first of March. You would hope that it would last through like the end of the spring and the entire summer. But then again, I mean. When when does training camp start is the biggest thing. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? And the fun NFL news is that the owners have improved the 14-team playoffs. 14. So as of right now, yeah, there will be seven teams from the AFC, seven teams from the NFC, the top seeds are the only ones that get by weeks. You have three wild card games in each round. Yeah. Um Nickelodeon's gonna get some wild card games. That was another big story that kind of threw me off the loop. Nickelodeon. They're gonna have broadcasts aimed towards younger audiences, which is smart because you know at the same time. You want to develop your younger audience because that's going to be your new consumer base. But also, American football, don't let the NFL fool you. American football is still growing around the world. There are other countries that play it. There's an American football World Cup. But American football ain't basketball. Damn train soccer. So you want to make sure that you cultivate the younger generation because with the way that science is going right now, with the way that coaching is going right now, the fact that Bill O'Brien still exists in the world, um, yeah, you're going to need a workforce. Let's be, let's be real. You're going to need people to dream about playing in the NFL one day. And it's, it's, it's smart. It's long-term thinking. I can't ever get that long-term. So. One thing's for sure, you still speak on that Bill O'Brien. I thought you I thought you ain't like Jim Harbaugh. Jeez, I think Bill O'Brien might be no one I mean, on that not. The people of Michigan have full control of that situation. I could be upset at Jim Harbaugh, but that's only because I'm trying to educate them about why they need to move their ass quicker. Brill O'Brien has to have something on the McNary family because they are just, oof. Good Lord. You, you talk about the NFL just making money no matter what happens. Clearly. Because this man, Bill O'Brien, although the Texans are talking to Damon Harris. So, you know, maybe Bill O'Brien is just saying, F it. I just want to run the ball. I'm not paying for a wide receiver because I just want to run the ball. That's all I want to do. I want to run the ball and protect Deshaun. That's all I want to do. You still trying to get Deshaun of Washington course. out of Houston? I've only toned down because, bro, the league year is on pause. I'm hoping that some wheeling and dealing happens and some moves are made. I really pray to God up above that the Houston Texans hit a whammy move and dropped a quarterback in the second round. Blessings come in many forms. And drafting Deshaun Watson's replacement, only for that replacement to be a bust, is one surefire way to save Deshaun Watson. Uh, don't get it chosen. He still hit tennis Titans more than anybody in that division. Everything is going according to Everything has gone according to Everything's going according to plan. As far as the Tennessee Titans doing that long-term implosion? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, all right. That's all we got for you. Uh, Anchor. 
iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Castbox, you name it, we're probably on it. Just search Playmakers Blog Podcast. You'll find us. Uh, Dallas, we're back on YouTube. I found a way. I found a way for, I found a way to get the audio done in a video form, but I don't have to do nothing. So every episode that is published, a video will be made for me, and it'll be shared on YouTube. Mm. Mm. So, uh, anything else? Uh, Thursdays, RTS Sports Network. Thursdays, 9 p.m., 10 p.m. Yes, we are fully, we are in the literal time, prime time spot. Don't ask what happened, because I don't know what happened. He wanted to make some changes, and we end up being Thursdays from 9 to 10. So. Ooh, I like that. And I'm still working on some stuff for you guys. I'm still working on some things, and no matter what COVID-19 does, I, I always going to pray. I'm always going to stay home, unless I got to go to work. And if I'm home, I'm working on the brand to keep keep the brand going. That's what we do. And uh, Dallas, is, he still has to move to South Florida, unfortunately, even though this is going on. Yeah, I mean, can't renege on apartment applications. You know, some stuff you can't push back. So I was, I was, I'm surprised I ain't put a hole on it with all this going on. Yeah, you know, but hey, you know, just because I have an apartment complex over there, I still got a lease over here. So, you know, business is business. If you're in business, you know. So, that's going to take us a hiatus, probably a week or two. Get I everything ready. I say a week or two, because, you know, well, actually, no, make, no, that'd be, actually, talking about, yeah, about three weeks. I take that back, because he will he'll be back for the draft. Yeah, more than that, it's going to be after the draft. Yeah, that might I mean, be back that early. Draft time. He'll be back. But until then, hopefully by then he'll be he'll be fully moved in down south to not, South Florida. Unfortunately. Well, with that being said, pray for him. Make sure everything's safe and done. You knuckerhead idiot, stay home. Stop throwing block parties and going to the beach before the governor and before the governor really starts hammering down. Because he's trying to he's trying to be He's nice. not trying to be nice. He's trying to Protect the money and the revenue, but you know, hey, CNN can give you all that stuff. So, y'all keep messing around. Y'all gonna force his hand. So, I think Fox do the right thing. That was a good movie. Do the right thing. Stay your butt home unless you got to go to work. And hey, uh, man, I I forgot. Yo, watch the Deion Sanders documentary where you play for the MLB when you play for Falcons and the Braves at the same time. And if that doesn't tickle your fancy, remember, Michael Jordan doc is coming out early. The 90s Bills doc is coming out early. The Last Dance is coming out early. So between 2K, between 2K, Madden, and The Last Dance, you're doing it to yourself. You can't say you love sports. And then EA is just basically going balls to the walls, giving out free stuff and DLCs and everything. And then The Last Dance is coming out early. Esports is a sport, too. And The Last Dance documentary, these trailers have been nuts. There is no reason. No reason. Unless you just want to be a dumbass. Well, in that case, I don't really have to count for that. There is no count for that. But stay out, but on. We want it. We want to slow down this thing. We want our sports back. So with that being said, that is playing who's in Pensacola right now, but by the time he gets back, he should be in Tampa. Yes. I'm being Jacksonville regardless. I ain't going no damn well. Until next time, me and Dallas will holler at y'all later. later. And then, Alex, do your thing, sir. Putting in your hands for right now.